Father, we give you the praise and the honor. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify your name. We glorify it for this service. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you. Bless someone tonight, today, with your word. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord the praise. Take your seat. And when you do your modification, don't forget the original line. Right? Give the Lord a big clap of hand as you take your seat. Oh Lord, our God, rain. In heaven, our God, rain. Every love in the sea. The Lord most high God reign. The Lord our God reign. In heaven our God reign. On earth below and in the seas. The Lord most high God reign. In might he reign. In the glory of his majesty, he reigns. He reigns. He reigns. In the glory of his majesty, he reigns. I welcome everyone here to this service, this second service this morning. We are about to look at one of the most important subjects we have studied on the subject of supernatural supplies and this is titled dimensions and channels of the harvest part two dimensions and channels of the harvest part two first of all we will be understanding dimensions of giving and second objective will be understanding dimensions and channels of the harvest if there is any time to know about giving and any time to know about the harvest is times of scarcity times of famine Times of shortage. We read Joel chapter 3, verse 13, a part. He said, Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down. Every time the harvest is ripe, first we must know, and next, we must put in the sequel. There were two things I said in the first service. And I want to repeat them in this second service. By way of introduction. First. That God is a rewarder. Both of both the diligent seeker. And the diligent sower. He is a rewarder of the diligent seeker and a rewarder of the diligent sower. We looked at many scriptures in the first service and we are going to look at many more in this second service. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 6. He said, in the morning sow your seed and in the evening Withhold not your hand. For thou knowest not whether or which one shall prosper. Either this or that. Or whether they both shall be alike good. So continuously and consistently. Zechariah chapter 8 and in verse 12. He said, for the seed shall be prosperous, or prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase. 
and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these things. So the seed is the door to the prosperity. Is the door to the fruit. Is the door to the increase. Is the door to the possession. Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 and verse 19. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving but you only. So it is giving and receiving. Not giving and giving. It's giving and receiving. Verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. God is committed. He's a rewarder of the diligent sower. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Father, he said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaking together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that he meet without, it shall be measured to you again. Give. God is a rewarder of both the diligent seeker and the diligent sower. Second, he said, it is not only important to be a good sower, it is vital to be a good reaper. We saw already the John chapter 3, verse 13a, and then Isaiah chapter 9, verse 3a. Thou hast multiplied it, nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee, according to joy in the harvest, and as men rejoice when they deny the spoil. It's important to understand harvest and to understand when to receive when the harvest arrives. Somebody here, your harvest shall not elude you. If you believe that, say loud, amen. So very, very quickly, we shall look at two things. First of all, dimension of, dimensions of giving or giving types. And then second, we shall look at channels of giving. So let's look at dimensions, give, basic giving types. Number one is called free will offering. We look at several scriptures earlier on, but we shall look at more. Free will offering. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. He said, Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Appearance before the Lord empty. Is not allowable according to the war. In First Chronicles sixteen twenty nine, look at this. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Bring an offering and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Coming before the Lord. There is a demand of bring an offering and come before the Lord. Free will offering. You don't have to bring. You won't sell yourself to bring. But for as long as you have, you say bring. Now look at Matthew 5, 23 to 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift thy offering to the altar. So we are expected to bring our gift to the altar. And there you remember that you have an ought or rather you remember that your brother has an ought against you. Leave your gift before the altar and go your way first. You reconcile to your brother. So, And then come and offer your gift 
So every time we come before the Lord, there is an expectation that we come to offer something before God. So that is the free will offering, service offering, when service is on. Number two is the tithe. The tithes. Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30. Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 30. We are looking at extra scriptures that we never saw in the first service. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. All the tithe of the land. All. Matthew chapter 23 and in verse 23. In case somebody said, this is Old Testament. He said, want to use scribes and Pharisees hypocrites. For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. This ought ye to have done and not leave the other undone. You Pharisees, you are so particular about tithing, but you don't have mercy on people. You don't even use common judgment. And you are not walking in the faith. I am not saying don't pay your tithe. But do this one, then do that one. Somebody say amen. If you look at the New Living Translation of the same, or the Living Bible, if you have it, you can place it on the screen for us. There's a way it puts it. Or, what sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and the new Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens. But you ignore the more important aspect of the Lord. Justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes. But don't neglect the more important things. That is, don't be a tighter and be a thief. Don't be a tighter and don't tithe from your prostitution, prostitution money. You should tithe, yes. But don't neglect the other ones. Hebrews chapter 7 and in verse 7 and 8, we read it earlier on, it was already in the first service, he said, and without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. How? Here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. Somebody say amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. One thing that I like about God is that the Bible is very complete. Can somebody say amen? Whenever somebody comes with one angle and is beginning to make arguments that are upside down, you just go into the Bible and you just balance it up. You should tight, yes. But don't omit the other one. That is tight. Number three is sacrifice. Sacrifice in the book of Psalm 126 verse 1. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O oh Lord, as the streams of the in the south. They that sow in tears, that is called sacrifice. They reap in joy. Sacrifice is giving that was inconvenient, it was uncomfortable. Giving that cost you something. Once in a while it is called, or oh, God deals with you to sacrifice. They sow in tears, they reap in joy. Any examples? Yes, Abraham. Genesis 22 and in verse 1 all the way to verse 2 and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him Abraham and he said 
Here am I. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I should tell thee of. Take your son, offer him as a sacrifice. When Abraham did that, the covenant was sworn on Abraham that changed everything in his life. We read this passage in the first service and I feel like reading it again. Psalm 20 verse 1 to 3. He said, the Lord bless you. The Lord hear you. In the day of trouble, the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from the sanctuary. Strengthen you out of Zion. And remember all your offerings. And accept the burnt sacrifice. Sacrifice is what you do that provoke remembrance from heaven. It establishes a memorial altar for you and God. That is sacrifice. Number four is project giving. Project giving. This is giving that enhances kingdom projects and devil. Exodus 36, 3 to 7. There was a building in the, sun, in the, in the, in the wilderness. And Moses commanded that offering be received from the children of Israel. Look at this. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary for the construction to make it with all. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Not every Sunday. Every morning. Keep going. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came. Every man from his work with the man. And they spoke unto Moses saying, The people bring much more than what is enough for the work, service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave a commandment. And they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let no man or woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. Don't bring any offering anymore, if it is for this building. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. Ay, 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 ay. Have you ever seen where the pastor announced? For this structure, don't bring any offering anymore. It is paid for. The church of Jesus is in that realm right now. And your life will come to the point where you will have more than enough all the time. Somebody say loud, amen. That is projects given in Psalm 132, verse 1 to 5. See what David the psalmist said. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swore unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house. Nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids. Until I find out a place for the Lord. A habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. I won't sleep. Until I build God a house. Wow. And that changed the life of Jacob. Of David. That is projects offering. Number five is outreach. Outreach giving. Which is more like a soul winning giving. Evangelistic giving. We read Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. In the first service where he said. My city's true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. I spread the kingdom around. True prosperity. We read Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 6. Where we saw how Peter gave. The source of his livelihood. And everything exploded. But look at Luke chapter 8. And in verse 3. Luke chapter 8. And in verse 3. And Joanna. The wife of Tuza. Herod's steward and Susanna and many others 
they ministered unto Jesus out of their substance. He went everywhere doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10 38. While he moved, ay, 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 ay. he moved with a team of 12 matured men. Anywhere he slept, they slept. Whatever he ate, they ate. For three and a half years, he paid their bills. And paid the bills of their wives at home. But there were people who was ministering to make the crusade team work. People thought that, people thought, you see, Jesus multiplied bread, five loaves and two fishes for 12,000 in performance of miracle. But when, it, when they needed to eat, they bought food. Judas was the, set, was the treasurer. When he told Judas, what that do, do it first. He said some people thought that he was asking him to go and buy things. Because they were, they were buying things. When he said, feed this people, he said, where shall we find bread enough to buy? So there was money to handle the team of people that went on assignment. And there were people who made money available. Somebody say, Amen. I, I see there are people rising out of here that God will use to make major things to happen. If you are among such people, you say aloud, Amen. If you are among such people, you shout aloud, say, Amen. We have had crusades before. But I caught crusade. They just showed us the clip. They have the clip of the but I got crusade. Last week, and it was it was held. One person made a, a, a request. What is the cost of the crusade? It was given to him millions, not ten, not twenty, not thirty. That's per crusade, and that was written off in one check. Handled. That is outreach giving. How excited will you be to see that God use you to make these kind of things happen from time to time? Cameroon crusade. I don't know if they have a clip. Someone said, what is the cost of that crusade? Why are the amount? And that person said, I want to be part of Cameroon crusade. We said, Cameroon crusade has already been paid for. He said, please, can you apply the money to another program? All right, we can. Did you hear that? Cameroon Crusade has already been paid for. All right, let the money be directed to any other outreach. All right, that is done. Because we need to let you know. So it doesn't look like uh, we are collecting double money for the same crusade. <laughs> Hallelujah. The crusade you say you want to pay for somebody has already paid for it. Okay, I'll still release my own. Any other program, let it be done. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are people here in a short while to come. The Lord will put enough resources in your hands and is beginning right now to do things that many people should have done. Only you will take it up and get it done. Shout the loudest, Amen. That is outreach given. The same way they were giving to us Paul's outreach in Philippians chapter 4, verse 15, all the way to verse 19. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church commit. This is in the beginning of the gospel, he's talking about when I started preaching and ministering and going on outreach, no church communicated with me. As concerning giving and receiving. But you only. For even in Thessalonica. You remember the outreach in Thessalonica. You sent once and again. Unto my necessity. Not that I desire a gift. But I desire fruit. That may abound to your account. And I have all. And abound. And I am full. Having received from Epaphroditus. 
the things which were sent from you an odor of a sweet smell a sacrifice acceptable well pleasing to God and my God but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus somebody say aloud amen that is outreach giving to give to us the crusade number six is less less privileged giving giving to, to the poor giving for charity giving orphans giving school fees medical bill the kind of things that people are stranded they can't do things for themselves and giving to us this is a kingdom financial practice that changes stories proverbs 22 and in verse 9 we have scriptures already written but proverbs 22 verse 9 say he that has a bountiful eye shall be blessed for he giveth of his bread to the poor a generous man shall be blessed because he does not allow the poor to remain in poverty proverbs 28 and in verse 27 28 and in verse 27 he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack but he that hideth his eye shall have many a curse to give it to the poor he shall not lack in givings to those who are in need among us like i said in the first service every month we minister to the needs of the needy and I think in this kind of scarcity now, I don't know how we're going to go about it, but there are people who go home and don't even have physical food to eat. In a short while from now, we should be able to have, whether it is raw or cooked food, at the end of service, maybe, maybe raw. For those who, look, if I go home now, nothing to eat. And then be able to minister to people on that frequency. But on a monthly basis, we are empowering people, tailoring, baking, Headdress, all manner, every single man. This is less privileged given. That's number six. Number seven is priest, priestly or prophet given. Priestly or prophetic or prophets given. In Second Kings chapter four, verse eight to eleven, we see the story of the Shunammite woman and the prophet Elisha. And he fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this man is a holy man of God that passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray you, on the wall. In other words, let's build him a house. Let's set for him there a bed, a table, a stool, a candlestick. And it shall be that when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. And he fell on the day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to the Gehazi, call this Shunammai to man. Long story made short, what is your need? Long story made short, barrenness was broken by the power of that priestly given. Romans chapter 15 verse 27. Romans 15 27. He said. It has pleased them verily. And the adeptors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things. Their duty is also to minister unto them. Call it material things. That is. We, we minister to you spiritual things. It is not out of place. To be part of ministering to them material things. In the book of Galatians chapter 6 and in verse 6, Galatians chapter 6 and in verse 6, it's the Bible says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. If you read other translations, can you give me one or two other translations? The one who is taught the word of God is to share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his spiritual and material support. Be very sure now, you who have been trained to, to a self-sufficient maturity that you enter into a generous common life with those who have trained you, sharing all the good things that you have and experience. Now we can stop there. The reason why we do not talk so much about this is because 
of two or three things. Number one, for the sake of avoiding misunderstanding that somebody is saying give to them. Number two, for the sake of avoiding abuses where people step out and begin to put people under pressure of giving to them. Please, I want to make it clear that this is a voluntary act. It is not an act that is to be done under pressure or duress. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and in verse 7, he said, Every man according as he purposed, not according to how he was manipulated. According as he purposed, not according as he was cajoled. So let him give, not grudgingly, not under pressure or of necessity, for God loved the cheerful gift. There are people when they pick a phone, pastor, preacher, whatever, to call people, they, the people are under pressure. Because it's another call to beg for something. It's another call to ask for something. Can I use your car? Can I help me? Can you take me to this? this and that? This is an abuse of office. Am I communicating? And I'm saying this now so that everybody can hear. Don't for any reason put anybody under pressure and don't let nobody put you under the pressure of release out of your volition as God puts in your heart commensurate to the blessing that it's being released on your life. That is how it happens. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Nobody may stand up one day and say, hey, I am pastor. That's my account number on the screen. In case you need to give me anything, do that. That is an abuse. That is an abuse. I was a giver for so many years to my father and the Lord. Over 20 something years, every time I give a tithe, I give a prophet's offering. The same percentage. 20 something years. And then the time came when he said, you know what? The rate and the way at which you are giving, you might need an account to make it easy for you. Yes, sir. Because I didn't know how to ask. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I want to make this point clear and I am happy because we are all connected and we are hearing so that there is no such abuse. And anywhere you go anywhere and somebody say, you know what? I am prophet and I prophesy to you now. The Lord says he wants to change your level but he says you should change the document of your house and give it to me. You look at him and say, the Lord says I shouldn't give you. <laughs> the Lord has not spoken. And if he has spoken, I have no help. And if he has spoken, may he speak directly to me. Somebody say loud, amen. amen. Or the Lord say you should give me your, your car. Or the Lord say you should remind me, remember me every month. I believe that that is clear. I decree upon somebody here today an open heavens is your portion open heavens is your portion open heavens is your portion finally there is one more giving that is well call it the first fruit given we saw the first fruit first in the operation of Cain and Abel in Genesis chapter 4 verse 4 the Bible said, and Abel, if you start from verse 3, and in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought off the fruit of the ground, an offering to the Lord, out of. But Abel, he also brought off the firstlings of his flock, and the fat thereof. The, a major difference between Cain and Abel is that Abel brought anything he could lay his hands on out of. Sorry, Cain brought anything he could lay his hands on out of the ground. But Abel brought the first one, the first one, the first one, the firstling of his flock, the first one. My, my goat is delivering, 
This is the first one that comes born. Lord, I give you my sheep, my this and that. And then God accepted his offering and refused to accept the offering of pain. In Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, we read that in the first service. The Bible said, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. It may be that this is the first profit that enters my hand. Lord, I give it to you. This is my first income. Lord, I give it to you. Or oh, this is my first increase. My salary was 70000 before. Now it is 100000 The increase in is 30000 Lord, I hand it over to you. This is that first increase. Uh, in order to open the heavens over what I am doing. I prophesy to somebody here, it's a new day for you. Say a louder amen. amen. Say the loudest amen. amen. Say amen at the top of your voice. Amen. Anybody blessed here today, shout the loudest amen. amen. The scarcity of this season shall never be experienced near your life. The, the shortage that is being experienced in our world and our nation today shall never be experienced near your life. When men say they are cast down, you shall say there is a lifting up. Shall the Lord say amen. In beginning to round off, let us look at the channel. Please sit down. Of receiving. It is the same thing that I'm going to look at other scriptures. Open heavens. Dimensions and channels. If I give, when I give, I expect to receive. How does God bring my releases? What? Do, how does God bring to me what I, what what is due me? It is open heavens over our lives, and then give us. General scripture here was Malachi chapter three verse ten and verse eleven. Verse ten in particular, I said, "Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house." And prove me now here with say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. So he opens the heavens. And in the first service, I was defining the open heavens. I said it means experiencing results beyond the scope of earthly situations and circumstances. In the open heavens. God causes you to be under the climate of heaven where your result is beyond the scope of earthly circumstances and limitations. Earthly conditions and circumstances. It is taking one step and seeing the result of, ten, of a hundred steps. Let's look at examples. In the first service we saw Isaac and Joseph. Now look at Jacob. Jacob in the house of labor. Genesis chapter 30 verse 27. Mm. And Laban said unto him, I beg you, if I have found favor in your eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Verse 30 he said, it was a little you had before I came. And now it is increasing to a multitude. Jacob was speaking to Laban. And the Lord has blessed thee since my coming. When you operate under an open heaven, your case is different. Look at your neighbor say, my case is different. Look at somebody here saying, my case is different. Do you know that from 2015 all the way, eight years from 2015 was the beginning of the worst years that this nation ever experienced. The last administration, disaster, calamity, catastrophe. Both those who functioned there and those who brought them they will never lose their reward in this world and in the world to come. They will never escape their reward 
for inflicting a generation. The other day I saw the, a little clip of some small children who took another little child to the bush, tied the hand. They asked them, what are you doing? They are practicing kidnapping. Little children. It's on your phone. That they are practicing the, the trade, how to learn it. That is disaster, security disaster, educational disaster, economy, everything disastrous we want before that era came. People didn't hear. While that number of years was going on, that was when this construction was on. Scarcity, shortage, poverty, roof costs multiplied three times. Because we're using raw, raw naira to buy raw dollars. Foreign currency. Multiply three times from 190 to over close to 600, 700 then. And there was no slowing down once. Because the covenant is a covering. It's a covering. It covers you from generational calamity. So when we speak at times, we are not talking because of ourselves or on behalf of God or, or because of securing God. God is secure. His work, his agenda is secure. You heard what I said? All those people who brought this calamity to this nation, both the operators and those who, in this world and in the world to come, they will lose their reward. Somebody say loud amen. Somebody say loud amen. Take yourself. That, that was what happened. In the house of Laban, Jacob was different. Everything was different. Now, I'd like you to see a more drastic example of open heavens in the land of Egypt in the days of Joseph. In Genesis chapter 47, look at what was happening in, in, in Egypt. Verse 18 to verse 20. When that year was ended, they came unto him, that was J J Joseph, in the second year, and said unto him, We will not hide it from my Lord. How that our money is spent, my Lord also has our heads of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord, but our bodies and our land. Everything has gone. We have, why should we die before your eyes? Both we and our land. Buy us. Buy us. Buy us and our land for bread. We sell ourselves. We want to sell ourselves. So that we can have food to eat. And we, we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh. Buy us. But give us seed. That we may live and not die. That the land be not desolate. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. Everybody sold themselves. For the Egyptians sold every man his field. Because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh's. I want to ask you a question. What was happening to the Israelites in this same land where people were selling themselves? Look at verse 27. Just move up to verse 27. Verse 20 they have sold themselves. Verse 27. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt. The same land where people were selling themselves in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions. And they had possessions therein. And they grew and they multiplied exceedingly. Light and darkness side by side. Light here, darkness here. Abundance here, scarcity here. Ay, 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 ay. That's the kind of God I like to serve. In the land of Egypt, 
Why they were selling their bodies for food, selling their lands. There were some people exploding in possession, exploding in supplies. That shall be your case. If you write and I say, Father, I function under the open heavens. I function under the open heavens by your power in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. That is the open heaven where you are experiencing results beyond the scope of earthly conditions. Don't forget that what is happening on the earth is not defining your result. Number two, harvest channel. Blessing of the work of the hands. The blessing of the work of the hands. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and in verse 8. He said, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thy hand unto. The blessing of the work of the hands. You see, there is a limit to the blessing of a fixed salary. There's a limit. Oh Lord, bless me and bless him my place of work. Okay, salary is increased. New housing, allowance, and so on. But once it, it is to come to explosion, there must be a work of hand. And I am not saying to you, don't work. Yes, you can get an employment. And you must be faithful to an employment. You must give them an honest day work. The number of hours they are paying you for, put it in. But where it is possible to have a work of hands, something that the salary is invested in, that is producing returns. I'll give you an example. One young lady was a cleaner in Dunamis Church in Area 1. Young girl. One day I saw her talking with a man. And I said, who is this man? He said, he works for her. He works for me. You? You are cleaning here and somebody is working for you. Yes. What work? He said, he sells recharge, recharge cards for me and I pay him commission. What a wise little girl. Do you understand what I'm saying? That was what happened to Peter in the book of Luke chapter 5. We saw the story of Peter. When Peter toyed all night. When God wanted to bless him in verse 4 to verse 6. Launch your net into the deep for a drought. And when he had this done. He enclosed a great multitude of fishes. And his net break. Don't ever forget this. That the blessing of God. Is looking for the work of your hands. Somebody say amen. One of our brethren here said to me the other day, he said, sir, I started what, this thing after I heard one preaching. I can't remember the, the particular preaching, but it may be, in the, I can't remember the particular preaching, but I've seen another person told me, he said, you said, do what you find until you find what you want. Because whatsoever your hand find it to do, do it with all your might. So do what you find until you find what you need. So she began to do something she found. She said the thing is so blessed. She said some days I make up with 100,000. One day. That is what people wait for to receive at the end of the month. Some days. The blessing of the Lord is in search of the work of the hands. I announce to somebody here today, your harvest will locate you in the work of your hands. Number three. Divine ideas, inspiration, wisdom. Your harvest can come with one idea. God gives you a wisdom, gives you an idea, gives you an inspiration that turns you into a multi-billionaire. One wisdom, one idea.
Example, Joseph. Genesis 41 and in verse 34. Joseph got the wisdom of how to preserve food for Egypt. He got the wisdom, he got the idea. What was the outcome? Verse 39. You start from verse 34 all the way to verse 41. But because of time, let me read from verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed you all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house. And according to your word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said, Joseph, see, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Do you understand this? God gave Joseph an idea that was providing national solution. There is somebody here today, God will give you an idea that will answer national questions, that will solve national problems. We have a very terrible security situation right here. One of our young men came to me with a certain proposal in certain line. Prayers offered and he has a breakthrough in certain lines. But I believe that there are people that can have the wisdom. The kidnappers and terrorists, they call people on phone. They can be geolocated in real time. All manner of solutions can be packaged to arrest the evil beasts out of the land of the living, escort them away. Like they used to say in the village in those days. Escort them. Are you following what I'm saying? Those ideas, those wisdom, those insights can be given. And you are not trying to make money. You are trying to solve problems. But money came by default. Money came. Money came as a collateral effect. <laughs> I hear what I'm saying. Money just, money just came. Money just came as a byproduct. There are people seated here today. God is opening your. There are those looking for job, employment, and God is saying, No, it's not employment. I want to give you, I want to give you an idea. I want to give you an inspiration. I want to give you a, I want to give you wisdom. I want to give you idea. I want to give you inspiration. Something that others don't have access to. And something that the system will have no option but to engage you. Because without engaging you, no option. The wisdom of Joseph, they couldn't give it to another person to execute. Because they couldn't execute it. Somebody, if somebody wrote jam for you, and they gave you medicine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go and handle pharmacology, let's see. And go and trace the cause of the other name. <laughs> oh, they got, oh, he, oh he, he did, he did, he did jump for you. And they gave you aircraft engineering. <laughs> see, so there are, so, so there are some ideas, only you can implement it. Uh, the person who initiated it is the one who will perfect it. Somebody say louder, amen. Somebody say louder, amen. Somebody shout the loud most, amen. Somebody say amen at the top of your voice. Do you believe that divine wisdom and idea is coming your way? Shout, I receive. One idea set. Joseph over a whole nation. A whole nation. One idea. One inspiration. Over a whole nation. Take your seat. That was Joseph. In Ezekiel chapter 28 and in verse 4, God spoke about a certain king, Tyrus. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten the riches 
wisdom, understanding, and you have got gold and silver into thy treasures with thy wisdom and with thy understanding. Hallelujah. That is coming for somebody. Number four is divine favor and opportunity. Divine favor and opportunity. God can give you favor and the favor can give you anything else. In Psalm 44 and in verse 3, Psalm 44 and in verse 3, he said, For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. They got possessions by favor. You can be so faithful as a giver until God gives you favor, until God gives you opportunity. I tell you a story. I heard this, I read this from Mike Mudok, the teacher, pastor, a, pre a preacher. He said there was once a widow woman that was always tightened in Mudok's father, Mike Mudok, John Mudok, was a pastor. And this widow woman was always bringing her tight to this pastor. And the pastor always felt like giving it back to her because she knew the woman had need. I think there was a discussion along the line like, you know what, I don't feel like taking this money. You know, it's not given to you. He's tightened to God. This woman continued tightening until day they came. She ran to pastor, 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 pastor. Something has happened and I don't even know my worth or value right now. And pastor said, what happened? She said, right in my compound, in my premises, in my house, they just discovered oil. Not discovering of oil in Nigeria, America. Because if the discovery happens here, anything can happen. Uh, anything can happen. I don't know my worth now. I don't know my value now. I don't know what I'm even worth. That is where when you have it, you have it. If it is yours, it is yours. If it belongs to your father, it belongs to your father. If it belongs to your clan. Kenneth Copeland has electricity on his land that is generated and is supplying the neighborhood of his place. And they are paying him electricity tariff. There, if you have it, that is what God does. It will make you have what your, the money you gave couldn't have offered you. Amen. It will give you what money couldn't have bought. As part of your harvest. Many of us say, we've been looking for money in return for our giving. So it's a challenge. Just been looking for, where is the cash? I gave 1,000 the other day. At least I should expect 10,000. He's planning to do far beyond that. I announce to somebody here today a harvest that is beyond your wildest imagination is coming your way in this season. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord and say amen. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord and say amen. Look at your neighbor say your favor harvest is coming your way. Get ready, get ready, get ready for it. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Number five is the restoration of lost things and years. The restoration of lost things and years. Hmm. We read earlier on in the first service in Joel chapter 2, verse 25. He said, and I will restore to you the years that the, the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army, which I sent among you. Hallelujah. But I want to read, read a story to you that shows very, very clearly the impact of restoration as harvest. 
Look at 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 1. I will read all the way to verse 6. It is the story of the Shunammite woman. Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he has restored to life, saying, Arise and go thou and your household and sojourn Jaffa wheresoever thou can sojourn. <laughs> and another lament doesn't the Jaffa except God is God who told you. Sojourn wheresoever because some people have Jaffa until they have their pocket is completely wherever you can sojourn for the Lord has called for a famine and it shall come upon this land seven years in that verse one alone you see the prophet of the covenant this woman was giving food to the prophet built him a house by that building Prophet number one, reproach of barrenness was wiped out. Son was born. Prophet number two, that son that died, that was born, died. And the power brought the son back to life. That's prophet number two. Prophet number three, there was calamity coming. The covenant brought forth direction. The same God of covenant is giving this woman direction. You are a giver. You are not permitted to be swallowed by scarcity. God good oh, and God day. He day. He over day, sir. God good. God day. Who pass God no day? Listen. Three advantage now. Let's keep reading. There are more coming. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. That is bad is coming. You are not permitted to see it. And it came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. All right? you to pay attention to this woman's story. Nobody is talking to the man who she has husband who but nobody is talking to the man who we'll leave that for another, another day. And it came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out to the land of Philistines and she went forth to cry to the king for her house and for her land. Because when she left, people possessed it. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, said, Tell me, I pray you, some of the great things you, you this Elisha did. Tell me some of his miracles. And he came to pass as he was telling the king how he has restored a dead body to life. That behold, the woman whose son he restored to life was there. Cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman and this is her son. Whom Elisha is. The person I'm just talking about. See her. God is a connector. He's a God. He's a supernatural connector. He's a God of time. He orders your feet to be at the right place at the right time. He just makes you to be there. When your matter is coming up. When the king asked the woman, she told him, yes, this is the boy. He was raised back to life. But I am here for something else. I left this land and they carried all my property. No way. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer saying, restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land till now. Everything the land generated Give her a return on investment for seven years. Pay her the arrears of her money. Allah, Allah, this is the kind of God I like to serve. And what happened? And it was restored. 
this is a major department of the covenant. You are not, you can't be a giver and be a loser at the same time. No devil is permitted to inherit what is yours in God. Dimension and channel of the harvest is the restoration of lost things. Restoration of lost years. And number seven is divine orchestration and transfer of resources. I have another passage to read for this service. But because of how beautiful this passage is, I want us to read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10 to verse 12. He said, And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells digged which thou diggest not. Five years and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when you shall have eaten and before. Beware in case you forget the Lord your God. That is, that is a dimension of the covenant where you enter a house you did not build. You drive the car you didn't buy. Let me tell you something. If you need a house, don't be, don't be struggling to get the money first. Because God can give you house, money to buy a house and can give you house without the money to buy it. You don't believe? Over believe. He's the owner of the universe. In fact, you can have five million and it can make you own a house of 50 million. By supernatural orchestration. I'm about to leave this country. God has just spoken to me. I belong somewhere else. Just step into this house. Take care of it for me. For when? I don't know. Just go inside. Just live there. Please just keep everything in order. One year, two years, three years, four years, five years. What about your house? You know what? I'm, I don't even want that house anymore. I want to, you to help me find the land. I want to build another house. You can keep that one. Hey! Are you just sitting and looking like that? Stand up on your feet and shout the loudest amen. The loudest amen. Amen at the top of your voice. Remain standing in the presence of the Lord. My wife and I, we have experienced order of things that are not normal. What people use plenty money to get, we get it at times with minimal money or at times almost nothing. In time to come, we may be able to share some testimonies. Time to come. This pastor is uh, dressing well. Oh. Is Don't kill yourself. Oh. Anything I'm wearing now, I didn't buy one of it. One. One day I gave out almost 200 suits to our pastors as mantles. I can't say that I bought five out of them. But it's a walk. You are not looking for those things. You dash yourself to God. You dash your resources to God. Everything you are, everything you have is God's. And then you say, you know what? What people go to the market to buy, let me spare you from going to market. Let me spare you. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say louder amen. Somebody say louder believers amen. 
Esther chapter 8 verse 1 to 2. Look at what the Bible said. On that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews enemy. The house of somebody. Well, <laughs> let me go. The Jews enemy. He gave it to Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he has taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. That is house passing from hand to hand. This man who wants to kill you and your people, take his house. This man who prepared a gallow for you, here is his ring, his signet ring, his position, his authority. Take it. And then Esther said, Mordecai, you know what? I am already a queen living in my husband's palace. I don't need this man's house. Take it. God orchestrating. Don't forget who Mordecai was. Security man at the gate. He's now prime minister. He's now the occupant. In presidential villa, house number two. Somebody say, Elad, amen. Yeah. Look at your neighbor say, God will do it for you. Lift your hands and say, Father, do it for me. Do it, Lord. I am available. Did somebody hear something here this morning? Do you feel some freedom in your spirit? Don't be afraid of the season. Let do the right thing. And the season will be afraid of you. Don't be afraid of the famine. Do the right thing. And the famine will be afraid of you. Kingdom people are all weather people. Soldier come, soldier go. Barak. We are not movable, we are not hotable, we are not harmable by climate. We don't, we are not, our life is not determined by the environment. We carry our own environment. When Israel came out of Egypt, they were not part of the wilderness. They were in the wilderness, but not of the wilderness. Because there was a pillar of cloud by day that shielded them from the sun. And a pillar of fire by night that gave them heat and light in the cold night. So they were passing through a wilderness and they couldn't feel the wilderness. Because they carried their climate. The covenant is a climate you carry. said it doesn't matter what happened to the exchange rate. All you need to do is to have plenty of the virus. You know, he's very rugged. We can talk with some small diplomacy at times, but his own is bam. If you want, accept. If you want, be angry. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You will not sink in this system. You will not sink in this season. In the commanding the day, me I prayers, we have had testimonies such as, I have made more money this year than I have made all my life by prophetic decree. In all, that is, I have sold the way I haven't sold all my life. People are touching what they have not touched before in this climate. It won't be an exception. Say a louder amen. amen. Anybody bless say amen. amen. Lift your hands and thank God. We're going to pray the prayers we pray in the first service. And then we shall be off in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Lift your hands and say after me. Say father. Say it louder. Say father. father. Thank you. Thank you. For, your word, for your word. For your goodness. For your, goodness. For your faithfulness. For your goodness. And your mercies. Your mercies. Be glorified. Thank you, thank you. For the provision. Of supernatural. Supplies. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Be glorified, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Again, say, Father, thank you 
for your word, for your goodness, for your faithfulness, for your mercies. Be glorified, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the provision of supernatural supplies, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Jesus precious name.